Hello and welcome back to Booktube. My name is Will and hello. So this is a kind of a wrap up, um, kind of a discussion on these books that I've read recently. It's, it's only going to be short and sweet, but I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, here it is. This is the wrap up and it's a, a couple of rereads in here, but an interesting wrap up. And I'm going to start at the top and work my way down. So on the top of the list is Peter Newman's The Deathless. I adore this guy's work. This is fantasy. He's done post-apocalyptic science fantasy. He's a very varied writer and I just love his stuff. He's a very varied writer. I love his stuff. I think he is oddly underrated because I never hear anyone on booktube ever talking about this guy. Outside of a handful of book forums, no one ever talks about this guy's work. Actually, I know why booktube doesn't talk about his work because it's not YA but he is this phenomenal writer. I fell in love with The Vagrant because I got it on a whim and I couldn't put it down. And um, I basically am tracking down every single one of his books in hardback. I've read this before, I love it. I, I love his writing, it's gritty, it's intense. And it's really, really, one he's one of those writers that just keeps you reading. Like you, you find yourself going through his books and you can't stop reading. I also find his work very difficult to describe. Like, so this is a fantasy that has, it's, it's a dark fantasy. It's a ruthless fantasy. It's brilliant. The characters are rounded and well-written and it's just a very strong novel. Adrian Mole, The Cappuccino Years by Sue Townsend. I don't know if Americans are gonna know who Sue Townsend is, but this is kind of a flashback to one of my earliest videos on booktube it was like uh, took me talking about adrian mole i adore the adrian mole series and each book catches up with him at different points in his life and it starts when he's 13 and then moves forward he's now 30 and a quarter in this they're funny and enjoyable and interesting and the sort of dysfunction and representation of working class british families that you don't tend to see in a lot of fiction and the fact that you've watched this character grow up and change. Um, I always feel kind of like Sue T Adrian Mole died when Sue Townsend died. And I was very lucky to see the Adrian Mole musical, which was hilarious, worth it for the um, nativity moment alone. But just, I adore Sue Townsend. And if I see her books on sale, I always pick them up because they're always worth reading. And I love going back to her work. They're easy reading. They're written like diaries, especially with Adrian Mole. And you, all of her books are easy reading, but they're great fun and enjoyable and probably very representative, probably very um, much representation of the general public of Britain. Her work has this strong working class backbone to it. And I love that. I reread A Children of Men. Now, this is one of my favorite dystopian books. And I think dystopia went for a bit of an identity crisis with sort of the fad of YA dystopia. I mean, I love The Hunger Games, but it has a lot to ask for. I mean, literally a lot of very bad, generic, god awful YA dystopia. And this is basically set in a world where people stop breeding. This is dark. Humanity is dying out and a woman is pregnant and it's her and Theo and their journey. It's quite short. I mean, it is genuinely a really, really short book, but it makes it more impactful. And I'll put this up there next to The Handmaid's Tale. This is a gorgeous book and it's one of my favorites. I think dystopian, um, in adult dystopia, you, you get the explanation of why. There's always, there's always more to it. And in YA dystopia, and there's a lot of shit YA dystopia, is that un this, unlike YA dystopia, will actually explain to you what's going on and it's not used as a metaphor for being a teenager. This is genuine world, real world problems and you can see, you could see this happening. That's how this feels. It's, it's honest and it's in your face and it's gorgeous and I adore P.D. James. She's just one of those writers I've, again, accumulated and collected over the years. To finally find a decent copy of this in hardback, I was so happy. And finally, the big controversial thing that everyone's moaning about. 13 Reasons Why. I found a YA book I like. And I think I know why, because it's pre-2010's YA. It was published in 2007. And I read his other book, the Facebook one. And so I went into this with some trepidation because I'm not a great lover of the series just because it feels like another generic teen drama. The book is better. 
and oddly has a very weird 1990s vibe to it and I really like that. You know, this book seems to come with a lot of controversy. I don't really see the big deal. It reminds me of sort of the 1990s and the very early noughties of YA, where it actually dealt with more topical subjects and more serious subjects. Um, less long form, less metaphors, just dealt with subjects as they happened. And I really enjoyed it. I like the writing format. The, the I like his writing in this, and it's actually an interesting book. It's a very sad book, but it's a good book. So that is my little wrap up, people. Um, tell me what you think in the comments below, but I, I wanna ask you guys a question. What is your favorite adult dystopia? Comment down below, guys.